With the Fantastic Four out of commission, it's up to a new team to assemble to catch their killers, and at the same time they must prevent a catastrophe of epic proportions, as monsters are attacking major populated areas all over the world. Can this new team work together and save the day? Find out here, on this pulse-pounding episode. Look into my eyes. Your soul is stained by the blood of the innocent. Feel the pain. Space, the final frontier. We find a ship crashing towards Earth. Once it crashes, a woman with green skin leaves the ship vowing revenge at who betrayed her. We cut to New York, Four Freedoms Plaza, the home of the Fantastic Four. We find Reed and Sue Richards playing with their son Franklin. We then cut to one of the most messed up relationships, in my opinion, Johnny Storm and Alicia Masters. They are having issues because Johnny, at this time, has a boner for Nebula. I mean, I really can't blame him. What? She's gorgeous. Johnny runs off, then we pan over to not Ben Grimm working out. Not gonna lie, I have no idea who this is. She is a female version of the thing. I guess she is dating Ben Grimm and he is a human at the time. I have no idea how this works at all. He surprises her while she is working out with flowers and tickets to a fun night out. She passes on this as she is depressed and still hasn't gotten used to how she looks. And Ben lets her know that he understands and he will be there if she ever needs him. Meanwhile, in outer space, we have a group of scrolls trying to find the green skin lady who crash landed on Earth to, in the commander's own words, put her down. Back on Earth, we cut to the front security desk of the home of the Fantastic Four and a woman who is asking to see the Fantastic Four. She gets the man to call them and see if they're willing to meet with the visitor. As he looks away, she disappears. Next, we cut to Johnny Storm, deep in his naughty, pervy thoughts of Nebula. He turns around to see Nebula standing right there. He's in disbelief when she goes to kiss him and... What the hell? She zaps him with something in her hand and incapacitates him. Next, we find Ben Grimm deep in thought, worried about Shari, aka the new thing. He contemplates talking to his bro Stretch, aka Reed Richards, but decides against it as Reed hasn't had much time with his son Franklin and Ben doesn't really want to get in the way. Abruptly, Alicia appears before Ben, upset about her husband Johnny. Now, for those who don't know, I find this whole situation between Johnny, Ben, and Alicia super messed up because Ben first met Alicia when he just became the thing and she was blind and they fell in love and I don't read Fantastic Four regularly but somewhere down the road I guess Johnny gets with his best friend Ben's love Alicia and ends up marrying her. Like when? How? And why? In current issues, Ben and Alicia are married, the way it should be. Anyway, back to the story. Alicia tells Ben that she needs him. Ben is apprehensive considering the circumstances. She ends up zapping him with the same hand thingy. Ben is down. Now we move to Susan, who just put Franklin to bed. She is on her way to get the mail when Namor appears and puts his hand on her face and zap. Susan is another victim of this crazy madness. When will it end? Who will be next? Find out on the next Dragon Ball Z. Alicia interrupts Namor when she is backhanded and down for the fucking count. The device they have been using to knock out heroes is called the Synapse Disruptor. We then cut to the new thing, Shari, apologizing to Ben. Wait, Ben? Didn't we just see him get knocked out? Oh crap, I know where this is going. She goes to drink some tea and passes the fuck out. Not Ben, aka some imposter calling Shari a monster. They mentioned that they didn't think the Snaps Disruptor would work on her, so they drugged her instead. And now we have only one member of the Fantastic Four left. Our man, Reed Stretcho Richards. Deep in thought, working on a project, Susan creeps up behind him. But we know the truth. We saw what happened to the real Susan. This imposter goes to kiss Reed and gets him with the Snaps Disruptor. He freaks <gasps> out and involuntarily stretches all over the place. 
but Reed is still conscious. He is struggling to get up. When she pounces on him, she keeps hitting him with the disruptor. He is finally down. She admits that she underestimated him, thinking he would be the least of her worries. He ended up putting up the most struggle. She thinks to himself that he is pretty attractive. Had he not noticed her disruptor, we might have enjoyed ourselves before it became necessary to put him under. I mean, that's kind of messed up, but okay. Back in space, we find the scrolls arriving towards Earth. They scan the Earth for readings of any other scrolls that could be on Earth, hoping that one of them might be Delilah, our imposter that is attacking the Fantastic Four. They find many readings on a particular island. They decide to drop down and send out a search party on one island. Two men go out on search not particularly excited to do so. They are surprised at how many readings for scrolls they found on Earth. But they aren't worried. They are fearless warriors. Or so they thought. <laughs> Giant monsters! They double time it back to the ship. One of the researchers is surprised as these creatures aren't scrolls exactly, but they seem to exhibit a primitive scroll type brain structure. Analysis can wait till later. They decide to arm slave darts targeting each of the creatures as they are going to use them to help them locate Delilah. The scrolls target each giant creature armed with their neuro disruptors and fire on each of the nine giant creatures. They will teleport each of the giant creatures to different parts of the world and they will use them to flush Delilah out. Elsewhere, deep underground, we find the Mole Man. His men wake him to tell him about the monsters on Monsters Island that are under his protection have been taken over. This upsets the Mole Man, and he decides maybe he will allow whoever is responsible to live long enough just to regret it. Back at the Baxter Building, Fantastic Four HQ, our imposter Sue searches the databanks of Reed Richards' computer for something that could assist her in her search for something. We still haven't... She's been back quite vague, and we still don't know as the audience what her ultimate goal is in doing all this so far. She is surprised by the super beings the planet has to offer, as it is more varied than anywhere else in the known universe. She will now search for some help to achieve her destiny. She found four that should be sufficient for her purposes. She thinks, with a little guile... Gael. I'm sorry, Gail? <laughs> Gael. Kyle? Gael. She will deceive such simple beings with ease. Suddenly, the monitor next door pops up, showcasing a new broadcast. The newscaster shows a giant monster in Hong Kong Harbor. He states there are many more scattered across the globe. She deduced that this is the work of her pursuers. High above New York City, we find our favorite, friendly neighborhood web slinger finishing up patrol and deciding to head home for the night. To his lovely wife, whom he is married to, and always will be married to, because nothing will ever come between their love. Anyways, his spider sense starts tingling, leading him to the Baxter Building, where he meets up with the Hulk, aka Mr. Fixit, and Wolverine. Both wondered who called them there. Spider-Man goes to ask them, Hey, what are you guys doing up here? Both in unison, None of your business, wise guy. Sheesh, forget I asked. Wolverine begins to explain that he heard someone calling him there. He followed the call, and both he and the Hulk thought the other had something to do with it. Suddenly, out of the front door from the plaza comes the front desk security guard. Mr. Wolverine, Mr. Spider-Man, Mr. Hulk. Miss Richards said you'd be out front. She'd like to speak with you. Hulk is like, You gotta be kidding me. Nobody orders the Hulk around, especially not some fresh-faced kid just out of kindergarten. <laughs> Wolverine tells the Hulk to chill and says, it's the Fantastic Four, it must be important. But the Hulk is like, okay, whatever. The security guard tells them that she's upstairs in the penthouse and then asks where the fourth one is. Spider-Man's like, no one else here but us. Out of nowhere, engines roar. A fiery motorcycle speeds right past them. It's the Ghost Rider. He drives right up the building. Hulk decides to follow and jumps super high. Spider-Man swings away. And, well, Wolverine, he, uh, he decides to take the elevator. Wolverine thinks to himself, next time I hear a voice, I'm gonna take a nap. But once he gets up to the pet house, he sees the seriousness of the situation. The pet house is a wreck. All we see is Susan on the couch, upset. Spider-Man to her aid. Ghost Rider and Hulk looking around. She explains, I, I was out shopping, and when I returned, all I found was this, and worse. 
That's why I use one of Reed's latest inventions, a mental alarm resonator, to call for help. It's only experimental, but I had to try, and you came. Hulk doesn't seem to have any patience for this. He's about to leave, but suddenly Susan stops him and says, There is something you must see. Ghost Rider warns the Hulk that he shouldn't leave. He senses there is more to this. This is no joke. Innocent blood has been spilled. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. Susan responds that Ghost Rider is right. More innocent blood than you know. She tells them to come inside as they enter the room and they see the bodies of Reed, Johnny, the Thing, and you know the other Thing, Ben, and, and Alicia. All are shocked. Hulk doesn't believe this is possible. Spider-Man's spider sense is going berserk. Susan says they're all dead and their killers are alive. Spider-Man asks if they're the first to know. Susan responds yes. She hasn't gotten the word out yet because all their enemies would resurface right now and they can't afford that. She says that when she got home, Reed was barely alive and he warned her of a terrible threat against humanity. The enemy has caused great beasts of the earth to rise up against mankind. But the monsters aren't the real danger. The Avengers, the armed forces, and the others will stop or delay them. The real threats the beings who killed her family, so they must stop the ones who are driving the monsters against them. Unless they are found and stopped, millions of innocents will die. Sounds like work. How are we supposed to find these drivers? Says the Hulk. Sue says with this, a subtonic spectro analyzer. Reed was able to record his assassin's energy configurations before the enemy overwhelmed them all. Hidden somewhere on Earth, that energy is driving these monsters, and that's where the assassins are to be found. This device will locate them, but they are deadly. Even the four of you may not be able to stop them. Hulk is like, Lady, the one of me could stop anybody, but these guys can come along for the ride. Looks like I might be late to dinner tonight. Wolverine is just... Just call us the new Fantastic Four, Webhead. Let's go kick us some butt and take us some names. Next, we see the new Fantastic Four high above the city skyline. Hulk is doing the driving, and Spider-Man is not too sure about that. Spider-Man and Hulk bicker back and forth, Hulk admitting that if it wasn't for seeing the bodies of the Fantastic Four, he wouldn't be here. But with, with what Susan Richards had told them, he couldn't skip out on her. We get a little recap of what we literally just saw, as this is the beginning of issue two. Spider-Man observes that she seemed pretty bloodthirsty, and Hulk says that she picked the perfect guy for the job as he had a lot of respect for Richards. When he finds out who did this, he's going to nail their hides to the wall. He says that they can watch. <laughs> While riding the weird quad space bike, Wolverine observes the crazy-ass technology the bike has to offer. They are jamming jingle bells, DC channeler, and an air freshener. Cookie cocoa dispenser. The cocoa comes out nice and hot. And out walks the cookie. Even a mini fridge. He also notices that Sue was right that there are monsters coming out of the woodwork all around the world. Then Wolverine starts looking for something to drink in the mini fridge. Uh, probably beer. Spider Man hasses him about it, and Wolverine tells him to lighten up. He'll get serious once they find the guys they're looking for. Wolverine then asks Spider Man what he's got. Spider Man, using the device that Sue gave him, he's tracking the culprits to about a thousand miles from here. Ghost Rider responds, Spider-Man's like, you got that right, Flame Face. Hold on to your tail, feathers. We're out of here. Back at the Fantastic Four headquarters, our imposter revels in the fact that they will be taking care of her enemies for her while she is able to achieve her goal here on Earth. And we still don't know exactly what her goal is. She uses Reed Richards' computer to find what she needs. It looks as though she's looking for the very first scroll mothership to arrive on Earth. She seems to have found records of its landing and subsequent landings but no trace of exactly what she's looking for. She says there could be only be one explanation. It had already begun awakening by the time it arrived here and had gone underground. This means it could be anywhere. And unless she can locate it, her efforts will be in vain. But she doesn't know how yet. How will she locate it? She doesn't think she has the time to use this equipment to its full potential. In the time she has, she will have to use Reed Richards himself to locate the object of her search before she disposes with the hostages. We cut back to the scrolls parked on the monster aisle. They are waiting for results from the monsters they have scattered across the world. They know for a fact that she's on Earth. They just don't know where. 
While they contemplate what to do, Mole Man is outside observing their ship. Mole Man observes that they are aliens that are parked on his island, and he will punish them for disturbing his creatures. Delilah, our imposter, moves the hostages to an elevator that she keeps stuck at the bottom floor. She then has them tied up in a way that they can't escape, and no one will discover them in the elevator. She now goes to Richards. She wakes him up and lets him know that he cannot control his ability to stretch under her control, and she has his family hostage. Do what she says, and they'll be free. If he doesn't, they will die. He asks her what she wants. She tells him she is looking for an inorganic technodroid and ITT. Apparently, it is an egg that is in a dormant state. It's capable of concealing itself until it's ready to hatch. She is hoping that he will be able to find it with all his technology. He says that he should be able to process literally billions of bits of data, but he can't promise anything. She's like, find it, Richards, if you expect to see your family again. Although, personally, I think you should dump your wife. It's a pity you caught on so quickly. When I captured you, we could have had some fun. That's kind of weird. And unfortunately, my boy Richard is letting his mind wander a bit too much. Meanwhile, the new Fantastic Four are heading for a south across the Sub... Quana River. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but I'm guessing that's how. Wolverine observes the reports coming in over the computer. It looks like monsters have hit Moscow, San Francisco, and even Mexico City, and they're zeroing in on major population centers. Ghost Rider says they're nearing Washington, D.C., but have yet to see any firsthand evidence of the monster's presence. Spider-Man shouts, then, then take a look above us, ghosty. I think we're about to get our first taste of trouble. Hulk's like, wake up and smell the cap. Chimps. I've only been closing in on them for the last five minutes. It's a giant monster on top of a public plane. I see it, but I still don't believe it, says Wolverine. I'm in a pretty good mood, Spider Breath. This looks like fun. Why don't you drive for a while? Hulk shouts as he leaps off the bike and jumps straight in onto the monster. Spider Man, amazed at what he just witnessed, takes the controls and says that he's nuts. Nobody will catch him doing anything like that. Yet Wolverine answers back. Bad news, Spider-Man. I'm doing the driving. You're getting out. Spider-Man's like, what? Ghost Rider agrees, saying that the plane is coming apart and only Spider-Man may be able to fix it. Spider-Man glides towards the plane and starts webbing it up. As he does so, he mentions that maybe being a solo sort has its advantages. This feels too much like having a couple older, meaner brothers. <laughs> Ghost Rider observes that the Hulk could use some help, and while innocent lives are threatened, Ghost Rider can't stand idly by. He shoots his mystical chain in sections at the monster. This distracts the monster. Elsewhere, on Monster's Isle, the scroll's computers have located Delilah. She's in the center of New York, and just as they're about to leave, their entire ship is sucked into the ground. And some distance away, 9,000 feet up, we find the Hulk bashing that monster in the head when suddenly the monster goes stiff and starts flying away. They decide to follow the monster. They suddenly realize they're heading towards the Bermuda Triangle. They pass through and enter some weird type of green aura. It must be an effect of the triangle. Suddenly, they're at Monster's Isle. Spider-Man starts getting readings on the device given to him by our fake Sue. They decide to follow the readings and it leads down into a sinkhole. The same hole the scroll ship just sunk into. Back at Fantastic Four headquarters, Reed thinks he may have found what she's looking for, so they decide to depart and go after it. On the way, Reed tells his robotic receptionist that he and Sue will be taking a trip together and everything's fine. He specifically says to her, in view of the national emergency, be sure to tell that all my friends in the Marines. Shortly, they arrive to where they believe the egg may be. The imposter uses her synapse disruptor to shoot and destroy their way into the mountain. They make their way inside. We cut below to the Mole Man ordering his giant monster that happens to be holding the ship of all the scrolls are in to open the ship up and shake all the scrolls out. It's quite a hilarious sight. The scrolls are in complete shock at what's happening. They are completely surrounded. Mole Man questions their intentions and what the hell they are doing with his monsters, and he wants to know now. Not too far away, our new Fantastic Four are also underground, making their way towards Mole Man and the Scrolls when Hulk accidentally bumps into the giant monster that's holding the scroll ship. They realize it as being one of Mole Man's monsters. They're pretty sure that it doesn't see them, but Hulk wants to fix that right, and right as he's about to punch the monster, the monster steps on his foot. Ah! 
Hulk doesn't Smash. like that one bit and punches right into the monster. The monster picks the Hulk right up and starts squeezing him. Spider-Man's like, what do we do now? Wolfie knows exactly what to do. He starts pulling out his claws and starts stabbing the monster in the foot. The monster drops the Hulk and they realize the Mole Man is right behind them. The Mole Man demands to know what they're doing here. Wolverine and Hulk are at the ready, just about to bust a few heads when Ghost Rider tells them to wait. Justice will be served once they know the truth, as there might be more to this than they suspect. Spider-Man decides to be the spokesperson for their team and goes over to the Mole Man to speak. Spider-Man tells them that they haven't come looking for trouble. They're looking into the monsters that have been attacking the surface. They want to know who caused it. If it's Mole Man, then they have a problem. But if it's not, then they need to track down whoever is responsible and stop them. Mole Man responds by saying that he's already tracked them down. They're aliens. Spider-Man's like, eh, uh, beg your pardon? Mole Man responds, The beings you are looking for, they're aliens, and I captured them. I intend to execute them for what they've done to my pets. Spider-Man's like, could we get a look at them? We've got a lot of an unanswered questions about what's going on. Mole Man responds, how do I know you can be trusted? Quite honestly, you don't, but you seem to have the advantage in numbers. Heck, there's hardly enough room to walk. Good! Follow me and don't stray off into the other tunnels. He leads them right to the scrolls, but their captain seems to be missing. Our Fantastic Foy boys recognize that they're scrolls. They also recognize that there's no way in or out. If the captain is not there in front of them, then... Hulk, with a smug look on his face, asks Wolverine what he knows about scrolls. Wolverine says, just enough, what about you? As he is saying that, he's slicing up a boulder. Hulk says the same. I feel like breaking a few rocks. As he smashes down on another boulder with his foot, he asks Ghost Rider if he wants to get in to give them a hand. See, the thing about scrolls is they're shape changers, get it? Ghost Rider answers back. As he smashes in yet another boulder, and what do you know, there seems to be only one boulder left to smash. Just as the Hulk is about to smash down on the boulder, the boulder starts shaking and turns into the captain. Spider-Man demands that the captain tells him what's going on while the Hulk is still in a good mood. The commander answers back, NEVER! Scroll commandos can resist any form of torture. We answer only to the Emperor alone! Ghost Rider then pulls him in. We have no time to waste, alien. Gaze into the pet stare of the Ghost Rider and see there in your past. Speak. The commander answers. Our mission was simple. Among the few malcontents within the Skrull homeworld is a small cadre of rebels bent on the assassination of the Emperor. One of these leaders, a Skrull female named Delilah, escaped and fled towards Earth. Although even her captured confederates are ignorant of her actual plan. It is clear that they believe they they believe that here she will obtain the aid by which the Emperor will be slain. We must stop her. We employed the great creatures because we discovered that their mind structure bears striking similarities to the scroll mind, making them susceptible to our slave darts. We have planned to excite the level of mental activity on Earth until we had located Delilah's whereabouts. Wolverine finishes by saying, And then offer. Spider-Man observes that they're maybe at least telling part of the truth. Their equipment is responsible for generating the energy they have been following. But whether or not... Captain, look! The Earthling holds an experimental subatomic spectral analyzer. The Mole Man is like, What is he blabbering about? The scrolls are excited. Your device is a highly classified scroll weapons prototype. Spider-Man is shocked. A scroll weapon? The other guys observe it. There are only two or three of such devices in existence. How did you come by this? Spider-Man explains that it was given to him by the lady back in New York City. A lady in New York City? It can only have been Delilah. But this is perfect. With a minor adjustment, the device should be able to locate the rebel herself. The scroll gets excited. Curious. I'm getting double reading. And one of them is coming from the source very near our current location. Spider-Man Sputterson starts tingling. Just then, Reed arrives with the fake Susan Storm shouting for Reed to protect her. Spider-Man and the Hulk noting that this definitely saves them the trouble of finding her. I get first dibs, shouts the Hulk. Reed is like, look, hold it, Hulk. The only way you get to her is over my dead body. No problem, seeing as we already saw Richard's dead body. It looks like you're going to get your wish, you scrubby scroll. Our scroll imposter, disguised as Sue, yells for them to wait. 
she abruptly transforms back into her normal form, that of the scroll fugitive known as Delilah. She shares her plight, stating that she was driven into exile for daring to speak the truth against the scroll empire. They sent her their assassins after her to kill her. She says that she is a victim, but not the enemy of the Fantastic Four and Mole Man. The Mole Man is touched by her plight and knows the stigma of ostracism. He says that he will help her. He tells her his subterraneans will he uh, to hear the words of their master and to slay the scrolls. They plead with him to stop and listen. They say that she is a low-level telepath who can influence your thoughts. Their commander says it's no use. She has enthralled them. Her power won't hold them long, but it will be too late for the scrolls. The subterraneans start marching towards the intended victims when Ghost Rider speaks. Though I felt the force of her call, she has betrayed her evil intent, and my mind is clear. Whatever crimes the scrolls have committed, this woman seeks their death through treachery. I must not allow it, but against so many. What can be done? Suddenly, as if on instinct, as he raised his hand, fire shoots around the scrolls protecting them from the subterraneans. What's this? Feel a power I've not felt before. Flames are leaping forth as if by my command. The scrolls jump back, startled by the flames. And let the fire's purifying effect cleanse their minds. Just then, the Mole Man, Spider-Man, Hulk, and Wolverine all seem to wake from a daze. Oh, what happened? Says the Mole Man. I, I don't know. Delilah was talking to us and it seemed so reasonable. I was ready to kill the scrolls myself, responded Spider-Man. Could you imagine Spider-Man killing anyone? I mean, seriously, that's fucked up. Delilah has Reed get her and hem out of there. They leave on the flying bike they arrived in, but the Hulk curls a giant boulder directly at them. Spider-Man tries to stop him, shouting, wait, it's too late. Luckily, he misses. At that moment, Spider-Man realizes that the, that must be the real Reed Richards with her. She must have used her powers on our team to get them to kill her scroll pursuers. That's why his spider sense was going crazy in the lab. Spidey realizes she's probably has the Fantastic Four hidden somewhere as hostages against Reed. Of course, glass half empty, Logan responds saying, Could be, but with her power, maybe he can't tell she's not Sue Richards anymore. Maybe he doesn't care. Mole Man states that all this doesn't really matter now that Delilah and Richards are heading into the deepest levels of his domain. Even he can't effectively control the creatures that lurk down there. Who knows what evil they may unleash. Spidey still has that device Delilah gave him. With it, he can track them. They are headed for the second signal. Our new Fantastic Four head down the dark tunnel for the signal. Suddenly, Peter's spider sense goes nuts. At the last second, he sees it. A bomb. It's too late. It explodes. The tunnel starts to cave in. Our boy, the Hulk, holds up what he can, keeping the tunnel from crushing them. Hulk gives Spidey a bit of crap for the very last minute warning. Meanwhile, heading to their uh, destination, Delilah decides to have Reed stop the hover bike for a second. She wants to make sure Reed stays under her control and decides to push his interest in her even further. She turns back into Sue and tells him that she can be everything Sue is and more. She kisses him. How dare she? Then she finally tells us all what she is after. They are after these inorganic technodroids. They are a serious, indestructible, synthetic entities so powerful that they can that only the Empress can control them. They are hatched under the most gui uh, guarded and secret conditions, but this one was secured at a great cost and smuggled out of the Empire. With its power, she will shake the Empire. Back to our four buried heroes, Hulk is starting to get tired holding up the rubble and preventing it from crushing everyone, and then tells the others to hurry and think of a way out. Spider-Man says he has no idea what to do, as he doesn't think he's strong enough to shift tons of rock and doesn't think even Wolverine can cut through it all. At that moment, Ghost Rider goes for his chain and tells everyone to stand back from the wall. Hulk doesn't have much faith and tells Spider-Man to hold up the ceiling while he gets them out of here. Just then, Ghosty starts swinging his chain so fast it basically starts drilling through the wall. Ghosty just says, There's no need. We should be free, surely. Spidey is just like, um, Hulk? Hulk responds, Don't bother me. I think I'm about to get struck speechless. All of them are in shock as Ghost Rider is tunneling straight through the rock. 
they are all able to make it through. We then return home to the Fantastic Four. Johnny, the Thing, aka Shari, Ben, Alicia, and Susan wake up together stuck in the elevator. They struggle to get free when suddenly the elevator moves and brings them to Franklin, who has awoken up and unties them. Their cyborg or robot assistant informs that, that she figured something was wrong when Richards told her on his way out that with the fake Sue that everything was fine and that she was to tell uh, his friends of the Marines. She figured out that was code for everything he was saying was a lie. She then located Franklin and those who are trapped in the elevator. After that, she located Reed beneath the island known as Monster Island. They realize that that's where they need to go, but not before Alicia, realizing a shapeshifter fooled all of them, asked Johnny, what form did the shapeshifter take to fool him? <coughs> uh, uh, honey, uh, who else? You, of course. <laughs> Alicia and Franklin stay behind as the rest go after Reed. Back at the action, we find Reed and Delilah still disguised as Susan as they approach the egg she has been after all this time. The egg is being sat on by a gigantic green monster. Reed figures he can distract it by throwing a rock near it, and the giant is all and goes towards the noise. Just as Reed and Delilah approach the ship, the team, our team, catches up to them. Hold it right there! End of the line! You're just in time. You and your friends, you're going to help me achieve my goal. You must obey me, Delilah exclaims. Forget it, sweetheart. You're not that powerful, and I'm too mad. Now I'm going to... Hulk is interrupted when Delilah takes hold of Reed. You'll do nothing, monster. I didn't trouble all these light years to be stopped now. One more step, and my snaps disruptor will turn his face into a memory. She demands the Hulk to jump up there and tear the ship or egg to pieces. Before Hulk's anger gets the best of him, Spidey warns him not to jeopardize Reed's life. Not now, he says. They will get their chance. Delilah disagrees. She says their chances are over. Hulk begrudgingly does as she says and smashes into the ship. Hulk finds the egg inside the ship. He punches it out. She says, now with the metal locks broken, the vault will self-destruct in two minutes. Then why would they stop it? Asks Ghost Rider. She responds that they will be at the center of a giant devastating explosion. She states the only way to stop it is by deactivating the trigger deep within. The outer protective layer around the vault is third level antimatter ectoplasm. Basically only a mystical instrument can strip it away, such as the Ghost Rider's chain. Now, in the hatch, there are laser beams in constant rotation powerful enough to cut through anything that penetrates their orbit. But they can be stopped. Now, it's Wolverine's turn. With Spider-Man's help, he will cut through the next to the hatch and with his claws, jam the locking mechanism and stop the lasers from rotating. Spider-Man will use his spider sense to direct Wolverine's claws. Now that that is done, Spider-Man will hit the trigger with his weapon. Bullseye. Then the shell starts cracking. Delilah gets excited. Hulk stands in her way, stating anything with that much protection has to be powerful and should not be in her hands. If Reed was in his right mind, he would agree. She argues that Reed is in his right mind and shoots Hulk, saying he has lived long enough. Hulk responds that that is strike three and he ain't even scratched. Just as he is about to attack, Spider interrupts pointing out that the Mole Man and his creatures are here. Mole Man states he has got the scrolls to tell them what the egg was and now he wants it. He commands all the subterraneans to kill everyone. The egg will be his. Our team gets ready for action. Just as they're about to fight to their death, they are interrupted by a beam of fire. Wait, it's Johnny Storm with Sue. Ben Grimm and Shari, a.k.a. The Other Thing. Hey, they're both in rock form. That must be some weird sex. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Spidey and the Torch are pretty happy to see each other, and Hulk is happy Ben is alive. They are all surrounded by the Mole Man's subterraneans and monsters. In all the confusion, Spider-Man notices Delilah is trying to get away with the egg. He catches up to her. Or she threatens to fry him. He quickly grabs her wrist shooter, but as he does... Mary Jane? It, it can't be. He hesitates. His spider sense is going off. He knows it's a trick, but he is losing control of himself. He has to move before... Yeah! As he is getting knocked back, Spider-Man quickly snarls the egg with the web line. He hurls it. The giant green monster catches it. It's the same one that was uh, that laid on the ship with the egg that it was originally in. The Mole Man celebrates. The egg is his. While insulting the monster, he tells it to hand the egg over. The monster refuses and hugs the egg. It's kind of adorable. 
The Mole Man is pissed. You defy the wishes of your master? He tells his creatures to seize her and take the egg. Oh no, shouts the Mole Man. We see the creature's mate return home and he is angry, attacking everyone. The Hulk is not amused. Witnessing this, the scrolls see no other option. Rather than let the egg, the egg that when hatched will become the perfect assassin, rather than let it fall into the wrong hands, they decide the only thing they can do now is activate a device in the captain's hands. When activated, it'll obliterate everything within the Great Cave. And unlike the egg's protective devices, it cannot be deactivated. Ben, the Hulk, Wolverine, and Sue just happen to hear the scroll. Hulk wishes that he were back in Vegas. A loud noise begins echoing throughout the cave. The egg hatches in the giant monster's hands. The souped up looking armored hatchling just looks up to its supposed green giant mother. They both make noises at each other. Everyone looks on as on in horror as the Technodroid is imprinting on the monster, meaning only that monster can control the droid. Delilah shouts she's been robbed. The mother monster points to the scroll with the bomb. Before the captain has time to react, the droid pounces on him and drags him deep beneath the earth. Hulk, Spidey, and Ben in wow of what just witnessed. Spidey saying that they should all stand back before... Before that, the mother is angry and about to smash the other scrolls when suddenly the baby droid emerges. Oh, look at the hug! It's so adorable! Just then, Delilah, still disguised as Mary Jane, approaches Reed and tells him that they should go before anyone notices they are gone. Reed tries to protest, and then Delilah turns into Sue, stating that she can be a better Sue. He hesitates. She says to show good faith, she will release the mind locks that blocked his power. Finally, his powers are back, and with them, he wraps his arms around Delilah and kisses her. Damn it, Reed, what the fuck? And of course, just then, Sue, Ben, Johnny, and Shari stumble upon the horrid sight. Delilah gloats, calling them fools, saying Reed is hers forever. She freezes them in place with her telepathy and goes to zap them with her wrist device, but nothing happens. It's gone. Reed punches her in the face, knocking her on the ground. When they kissed, he had taken the device from her. Once Reed had realized she was a telepath, he had been biding his time seeing as sooner or later she would slip, and she did. When she saw Sue and froze the Fantastic Four, she broke hold over Reed. Embracing the real Susan, he tells her how much he loves her, and they kiss. And it is super wonderful. Delilah begins to get up, claiming that she will have Reed kill his own wife. She screams in terror. Spidey is like, what did you do? She has committed many acts of terror in her life. Now she must live with them forever. The strolls apprehend her and ask what of them. Wolverine tells them to get her out of there. Nothing you're going to do to her is going to be worse than what she's living through now. Suddenly, the Mole Man shouts, Have you soon forgotten the Mole Man? Spider-Man sets him straight. He points out that maybe Mole Man has a m few million subterraneans, but they have the Fantastic Four, Hulk, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, and have you ever really seen the Hulk when he's really mad? Do you really want to? With a careful consideration, the Mole Man agrees to guide them back to the surface. Shortly in the skies above the island, we find a helicopter with a familiar emblem on the side. He appears to have followed the monsters back to the island. Just as he's about to bomb the whole island to hell, he notices on the ground a plane, and on the way towards the plane, the Fantastic Four, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, the Hulk, and Wolverine. Forget this! I can see my help isn't needed here. And he flies away to the next job. The Fantastic Four was a series I really appreciated growing up. Without having really read the main title, I had read the first two volumes of the Ultimate series, played the PlayStation beat-em-up game, loved the 90s and 2000s cartoon series, and unlike a lot of people, I enjoyed the 2000s film with Chris Evans as Johnny Storm. I mean, the characterization of Doom wasn't the greatest, but I did enjoy his performance. After all, we're both... Doctors. Painful? You don't know the meaning of the word. I mean, that line delivery. 
so chilling. And they got his rivalry and hatred for Richards down, which is one of my favorite aspects of these characters. Also, the PS2 game, based on the film, is really fun, especially if you have a friend to play with. Marvel's First Family really does have a special place in my heart. Now, as much as I love the Fantastic Four, when I discovered the new Fantastic Four, I was hooked. I had to track down all their appearances. You have Dan Ketch, my favorite ghostwriter, Wolverine, the legendary X-Man, the incredible Hulk as Joe Fixit. I loved this version of him. And in this form, he can banter back and forth with the others. And last, but certainly not least, we have your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I mean, it's a pretty random mashup of characters. Behind the scenes, they were top-selling characters at the time at Marvel Comics. So Marvel decided to put them in a team together for three issues. But this isn't the last time we would see the team. For the next 32 years, they would have pop up randomly from time to time. Until they finally got their own five-issue miniseries starting in May of 2022. I plan to tackle all these stories on this channel in time. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This was one of the stories that came to mind when I first started doing these videos, and I couldn't wait. So I ended up doing this one a lot earlier than originally planned. I get impatient, and I absolutely love this story. The action, the comedy, and drama all mixes together to make a ridiculously fun story. If you enjoyed, make sure to comment and let me know what you thought. Subscribe if you want, and I hope to see you next time. Take it easy and have a wonderful day.